The Sunbeam Foundation presents Aquaponics Design and Operation. Let us check in with our facilitators for this tutorial, Hailey and Janice, for more information. At this site, we have a hydroponic system, we have an aquaponic system, which we're going to demo with you, and we have several grow boxes. Um, it's very important that we know how to live sustainably, which will include growing our own food. At the Sunbeam Foundation, it is one of our main drives to teach practices on sustainable living. Um, this is why we want to demonstrate to you the use of aquaponics as an agricultural option in farming. Indeed, Hailey, sustainability of a nation starts by sustainability of self. Being able to grow one's own food is definitely a marker on the journey towards self-sustainability. Now that we are aware of this, let's start the aquaponics tutorial with a definition. Aquaponics is the utilization of two ecosystems to get produce and a harvest from both. So basically it is the use of fishes and their effluents to nourish plants. Thanks Ailey. Aquaponics is actually a shortened term for the marriage between aquaculture and hydroponics, where the former cultures aquatic organisms like fish and produces nutrient-rich wastewater, and the latter utilizes this wastewater in the culture of plants. So what we have behind us is a basic aquaponics system, which would start with a fish bay, a reservoir, which contains our fish, now we have it covered because of the fact that it's in an unshaded area and our fish doesn't like direct sunlight. So what I'll do is I'll just open it so you can see. So we have our fish bay, which houses our fish. It's a 200 gallon tank and this size is designed to hold 25 fish. At the moment we have about between 25 to 30. From our fish bay, our water is designed to overflow via our plumbing system into what we call a mechanical filter. Our mechanical filter is designed to trap solid particles and waste. There are features in it such as gravel, a layer of gravel at the bottom and the placement of what we call filter pads to trap solid particles from coming upward and over into your next container so from your mechanical filter the solids have been removed from your water we have the water traveling through our plumbing system and going into another container which we call our biological filter our biological filter is the area where we choose to allow bacterial activity to continue which is necessary for the conversion of the fish's effluents into nutrients that your plants could obtain in here we would allow bacteria to colonize this what we have here in this net it's called bio balls and it's specifically designed for that purpose there are little balls with many bridges and grooves that are designed to give maximum surface area and allow bacterial activity to continue so in your biofilter you would put objects such as these that could give you in a small area plenty surface area so you choose to put nets so use curtains rope and other things like that that would have a lot of surface area so it is in this area that microbes would ingest ammonia and turn it into nitrates and then there'll be other bacteria that would ingest your nitrites and turn it into nitrates so just to recap the production tank is used to house the fish based on its volume which is approximately 200 gallons 
The stocking density of this tank is 25 fish per 200 gallons, or one fish allowed to grow to one pound, which is a harvestable size in eight gallons of water. This tank is usually supplied with aeration. The fish are fed protein-rich rations to boost their growth rates. The fish in turn produce ammonia-rich fecal matter and urine, components which must be filtered if the water is to be circulated and returned to the fish. The mechanical filter. This is usually sized as 25% of the production volume of the aquaponic system. The one being used in this system is a compound filter which traps various sizes of particles of fecal matter and excess feed. So as the water leaves the fish tank, it is passed up through the bottom of the mechanical filter where the largest particles are removed with the aid of gravel stones. Water continues to pass upward through the gravel in this filtration tank and is met by a layer of filter pads which removes the medium to small particles. Water, now devoid of large, medium and some small particulates, overflows to the biofilter. The mechanical filter represents one of the most important pieces of equipment in this aquaponic system, as poor function corrupts the efficient operations of it. The biofilter. As its name suggests, the biofilter biologically processes the wastewater leaving the production tank, not for solids like the mechanical filter, but for the liquid waste. In the biofilter, wastewater high in ammonia from mainly the fish urine is converted to nitrite with the aid of oxygen-loving bacteria called nitrosomonas. As nitrite builds up in the system, it is converted with the aid of another oxygen-loving bacteria called nitrobacter. The nitrobacter converts the nitrite into nitrate. These bacterial colonies thrive with the support of aeration and items with large inner surface areas. Let us now tune back into Hailey for him to continue the tour of the aquaponic system. From your biofilter, we have plumbing that would come into what we call the sump area or reservoir. This is the area where you would place a submergible pump or have some pumping mechanism which would deliver your water, nutrient rich, and it should also be clean from solid particles up to your beds. So you'd notice that this plumbing goes up and continues along. Now at this junction, we have what we call a media bed which serves as a space where you can grow plants but it also acts as a filtration point both for mechanical filtration where solid particles would not be able to continue through the gravel and it is also a space where biological activity can go on the delivery of your pipes continue along this way where it continues to the head of your nft bed these are called NFT beds, which stand for Nutrient Film Technique. And this actually refers to the type of bed where there is continuous flow of circulating water going through the beds. So what we have here is the plumbing and water continuously flows through, which your roots would grow down into and seek its nutrients. From the delivery point at this point, we have the water going down and back into your fish bay to continue the recirculation and continue that cycle. This system is, is designed to have 24 revolutions of all its water in a day. So that is basically one revolution of all the water in the system each hour. Uh, that's it as it relates to the components of this system. Thanks highly. So just to recap a bit. The sump. This collects the nutrient-rich water from the biofilter and passes it to two main plant production areas. One, which is a one-foot deep container filled with gravel stones, and the other, 
four four inch 19 foot long PVC hydroponic pipes. The water is pushed from the sump to these two main areas with the aid of a submersible 0.5 horsepower pump. Media bed. Filled with gravel stones, there is a flood and drain mechanism in place where water is further filtered, not only via mechanical filtration as a consequence of having gravel stones, but this area also possesses some biofiltration properties as oxygen-loving bacteria, though colonized and concentrated in the biofilter, are also allowed to colonize these stones. The hydroponic pipes. There's a nutrient film technique, otherwise known as NFT, occurring in this area. When nutrient-rich water trickles through the hydroponic PVC pipes in service to the growing plants. The trickling of nutrient-rich water through the hydroponic pipes is facilitated by a series of valves. These valves are ball valves in this case. Now that we have covered the tour of a typical aquaponic system, as well as discussed the functions of its main components, we will now check in with Janice and Hailey to cover more of the operational aspects of a system such as this. The first operational area to be covered would be fish maintenance. Let's tune in. Our system, we chose to use tilapia as the fish. Uh, there are several other types of freshwater fish that one could use, such as koi, cascado, cascarab, even the wabi river fish that we know locally. Um, I'm just going to show you what a tilapia looks like and in dealing with your fish you have to be very mindful that tilapias have a, a bone that can stick you right so we have the tilapia here and we can see that it is a female if you look closely at the genitalia you would notice that there is no indicator of it being a male there's usually a red dot in that area that would indicate the male. Might slip a fish there, highly. Indeed, there are many freshwater aquatic species in Trinidad that can be used for culture in these systems. From food fish such as tilapia and cascadura to crustaceans like prawn and ornamental fish like koi. They can even be the culture of many species in this same production tank also known as polyculture, once the organisms selected exist within different niches in the same water column. We have chosen the silver tilapia, also known as the Nile tilapia, as our nutrient supplier in this system. This is due to its high growth rate and survival rate, as well as its ability to be domesticated easily when compared to other fish and crustacean species. As highly mentioned, the tilapia he netted was male, seen as two holes on the underside of the fish, whereas a female of the same species would have three. It is beneficial to a system that all the fish are of the same gender. Keeping fish alive is no easy task. Let's tune back into Janice and Hailey for more on how to maintain these organisms safely in a system such as this. Now, when you're growing aquaponically, observation of your system is very integral. So therefore, you would have to be doing several tests on a weekly to fortnightly basis. Thanks for that, Hailey. There are many water quality testing kits that exist on the market. The one we are using is the Freshwater API Test Kit, which contains bottles individually filled with solutions to undertake tests on the water quality parameters ammonia, nitrite, nitrate and pH. You start by collecting 5 ml of sample water, preferably from the water returning to the fish tank. Then, following the instructions on the bottle of each water parameter, add drops of the solution and leave to stand for 5 minutes. After the 5 minutes have elapsed, you check the colour of the solution in the test tube against a colour chart provided by the manufacturer. Let's check in with Janice and Hailey for a live demo of this activity. 
So ammonia is a two-part solution where we add two different solutions to the sample water and we let it set to base. Based on the color, we can see that there is no ammonia in our water. We're also going to test our pH. We have a sample here. And if we look at our chart, you can see it's between 7.2 to 7.6. Thank you, Hailey and Janice. To review, the optimal ranges are as follows. For ammonia, less than 1 ppm. If it is greater than 1, you can mitigate by maintaining your mechanical filter and reducing the retention time of water in your production tank as long-term remedies. For short-term mitigation, you can do a water change or reduce the quantity of feed given. It is not advised to add plants to your system for values less than 1 ppm unless you are supplementing your nutrient supply with compost tea, which we have done here. For nitrite, the optimum value is less than 5 ppm. For nitrate, the optimal value is less than 300 ppm. These follow the same mitigation strategies as ammonia as they are byproducts of its breakdown. For pH, your optimal range of 6 to 9 is important. Due to the high level of respiration in your system, from the plant's roots, bacteria and fish, your pH tends to reduce over time. This can be corrected by the addition of calcium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. As tilapia feed tends to be quite low in iron, chelated iron is usually added to systems where green leafy crops such as lettuce and pak choy are being cultivated. All additions are made to the sump as they are directly needed by the plants and not the fish. So we know how to test to ensure system health using the API test and even testing ships if a more economical strategy is needed. What about just through observation of plant and fish behavior though? Is that possible? Let's ask the team. In observing your fish's behavior, look out for slow and lethargic movement and piping movements of the fish where it would come up and open its mouth to seem to be gasping for air. These are signs that your fishes are probably dying or uncomfortable. In the case of where they are piping, it's usually a lack of oxygen. Um, in cases where they're not eating and they are moving slow or lethargic, sometimes there may be too much ammonia in your system. Also, when I'm observing your plants, if you notice a uh, yellowing of your leaves in the old growth, it may be a telltale sign of a lack of iron, which is a known issue with aquaponics system. Great! Thanks for the feedback, Hailey. Indeed, fish use their own ways to communicate if they are uncomfortable. A fish piping at the surface is in need of oxygen. No need to buy an oxygen meter to verify that. To mitigate, one would simply maintain the aerator and or its associated tubing in the production tank. If the fish have lost their appetite, are listless or irritable or even lethargic, or the more obvious way an off smell of rotting eggs is coming from the water, it is definitely a sign of high ammonia. Okay, so up to now, most of our discussion has been concentrated around the fish. But what about the plants? So in NFT beds, we use net cups and the primary purpose of your hydroton balls is to support the upright growth of your plant. What Janice is doing here is spraying all of the medium that was used to hatch your seeds from the roots. You need to place it in water to do this because it's a little less damaging to the plant and you want to get out as much of the growing medium as possible. If you were to start by holding your plant like this and then squeezing upward, you would get into the root ball and you just tassel it in the water until it's free of as much of the growing medium as you can. In most cases, it's impossible to get out all, so you just get out the major amount and then you're going to thread 
the roots through the holes in your net cup. So if you look closely at what Janice is doing here, she's going to thread the roots at, at one or more point through your net cup so that you can have your roots going into the water. Right, so now that she's done that successfully, what, she, what we want to do now is place hydroton balls to support the plant's upright growth. Right, you put it up to the base of your leaves and then this plant is ready for planting. Now if you take note of it, your roots are at this stage and when, within a couple days of after planting it, your rooting would begin to develop downward from this point and go into the water where it will be trapping all its nutrients. Wow, that's a pretty cool technique. First, you get a seedling and clean its roots with water, being careful to remove only the debris from around the roots and not the roots themselves. Then, you get a 2 inch in diameter net cup if you intend on cultivating herbs such as celery, scythe, or shadow benny, or 3 inch in diameter net cup if growing head plants like pak choy or lettuce. You then carefully thread the seedling's roots through the available holes at the bottom of the net cup, sufficient that it can reach the nutrient film of water flowing in the hydroponic pipes. You can then add hydroton clay balls or even sanitized gravel stones to support the seedling to ensure it grows upright. These are inert and do not react with the solution around them. Be it head plants or herbs, there is usually a grow time of 4-6 to six weeks which is highly dependent on the nutrients released from the fish. You can obtain more consistent nutrient levels through feeding at consistent quantities or adding a supplemental source of nutrients such as compost tea. To get the plants to have a size takes some effort though. Let us check in with Janice for more information on this. So even though we are growing our plants above the ground, there is still the occurrence of pests, especially if we are doing one crop, such as lettuce, if you sell all the lettuce in this tree, we are likely to encourage pests that like lettuce. So one way of preventing that is by interspersing with other plants that might deter pests. So we have things like scythe. We also have the addition of biosprays that you can make at home. Things containing cinnamon or neem or garlic as well. You can spray on your plants. What we would also suggest in aquaponics system is that um, when you identify pests, you try to remove it manually since you're dealing with two ecosystems. Um, even when doing organic practices in terms of pest deterrence, some things that we may use can affect our fishes negatively, like hot peppers. So, if we have to use uh, biopesticides, sometimes we may have to isolate the affected plants, treat them, and then place them back into the system. Anything that you feed your plant here is going to reach to your fishes. So it's just to bear that in mind and try to research into organic practice as much as possible. Use of neem oils, cinnamon oils, garlic sprays, even companion planting. Thanks for these suggestions. Indeed, even better than having knowledge on the varying types and uses of biopesticides, nothing beats just ensuring the plant stays healthy. A healthy plant is the most natural deterrent against even the most persistent garden visitor. Okay, so we have learned the main components of the system. We have heard Hailey and Janice speak on operational aspects related to the system, the fish, as well as the plants. Now let's tune in for the final segment on suggestions on how to maintain the system for optimal life. As it relates to the maintenance of your system, which is very important, you would want to check all your several containers and bays to assess the quality of the water. This would tell you of what maintenance you usually have to make. Sounds about right, Hailey. The main areas requiring maintenance include 1. The fish tank Excess feed should be removed from the tank after 20 minutes. 
not only as a preventative measure to curtail the levels of decomposition and subsequent release of ammonia into the system, but also to reduce the incidence of clogging of the pipes outflowing from the fish tank. 2. The mechanical filter. This should be cleaned at least once per month to ensure that water flow is maintained. This can increase in frequency as the fish reach harvest size. 3. The biofilter. No attempt should be made to clean the biofilter mid-cycle as this disrupts the natural growth cycle of the bacterial colonies. All maintenance should be left to the end of the production cycle of the fish. Note that the biofilter takes approximately 14 days for the various bacterial colonies to become functional, causing spikes of ammonia, then nitrite and then nitrate until the system becomes mature. 4. The media bed. As the media bed is the only area that is open to the light, there can be a buildup of algae if the water flow in the flood and drain system is not fast enough. This should be monitored and cleaned as appropriate. 5. The hydroponic pipes. All efforts should be taken to ensure that all holes in the pipes are filled with seedlings. As nutrient-rich water flows through them, there can be a buildup of algae in holes left unattended. With algae present in the system, there is now a competitor for nutrient resources as well as oxygen. Pipes can be flushed with a light bleach solution and sanitized between system production cycles. Wow, feels like I've learned so much. Time to wrap it up now, team. So thank you for tuning in. We hope you learned a lot for our aquaponics module. Um, you can look at our Facebook page and Instagram page at the Sunbeam Foundation. There you'll be able to view live sessions on Sundays from 1.30 to 3 p.m. which will cover different food production techniques such as your aquaponics, your hydroponics, grow box construction. Um, you can also subscribe to our YouTube page where you'll be able to see the past modules that we have done as well as the future ones to come. Also, look out upcoming we may have a summer camp where you can learn a lot of different food security techniques arts and crafts plenty of fun activities so look out on our pages and our youtube channel remember to subscribe like and share see you guys again sometime Bye.